Now we've been inundated with a lot of laptops the last month or so, and I wanted to make sure I got out this next review because this is an important one from Apple. It's the Apple MacBook Air M2. And the reason I say it's important is because we're hearing a lot of controversy, whether thermal throttles, whether it does this, it doesn't do that. I wanted to see for myself, and it's fair to some of the uh, laptops I've been getting in, whether it be from Intel-based laptops or AMD-based laptops, I wanted to get a complete picture of all the laptops, especially the ultra-portable category here for 2022. So I've been using the MacBook Air M2 for the last couple of weeks, and uh, I'm impressed with it, although I have some concerns and reservations. We're going to talk about it here today. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my review of the Apple MacBook Air M2 here for 2022, coming up. Now, before we get to the unboxing, I want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Apple, I'm not being sponsored by Apple. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Apple is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit was purchased with my own money. I did not receive a review unit from Apple. Pricing for the MacBook Air M2 starts at $1199. Price as tested, $1499. For those interested, I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. And here's what's new with the MacBook Air M2. It's now powered by the Apple M2 Silicon, new thinner and lighter design, and improved webcam within the notch. MagSafe charging, improved display, a bigger display at 13.6 inches, new colorways, midnight and twilight, and you can configure this with up to 24 gigabytes of unified memory that is not upgradable by the user. So let's take this over here, okay? And... There it is, a space gray. Feels pretty nice, a little heft to it, a little bit more heft than I thought. Let's put it to the side for a moment. They get a braided cable. It's a gray cable. You can see the gray cable. And of course, this is the return of the MagSafe. We get some documentation here. We got MacBook Air here. Looks like some warranty information. Space gray stickers. Now, I think if you get the midnight black, you're going to get matching color stickers. So 35 watt charger, it looks like. Uh, pretty compact, pretty compact, but it is white. And again, of course, you got that MagSafe connection. And holding the unit for the first time, it feels very premium, very high end, exactly what you'd expect from an Apple MacBook Air. Now, this is a different design from previous models. Gone is the wedge design and this more boxy industrial look, which is more in line with the other MacBooks that Apple has recently released. This is more like that. And I like this design. It looks pretty nice. It's also lighter than before. Now, this is at 1.215 kilograms or 2.68 pounds. Now, with the power supply, that will weigh an additional 174 grams or 6.14 ounces and for those wondering yes you can open the lid with one finger and it has a really nice keyboard much improved i think from previous iterations and it's really comfortable to type on good tactility good key travel and i thought it was comfortable to type on for extended periods of time it also has a multi-stage backlight the white led backlight against these dark keys is easy to see in a dark room or a dimly lit environment good job on that front and of course, it has a really spacious haptic touchpad, probably one of the best in the business. Once again, Apple does an excellent job when it comes to these haptic touchpads. OK, let's check out the port selection on the left side is your MagSafe port. And next to that are two USB-C Thunderbolt 3 ports. Unfortunately, these are not Thunderbolt 4, more of what we like to see here in 2022. But they are full function. They do support data charge and display out but they do not support multiple monitors, which is a little bit of a negative in my book. That's really kind of strange, to be honest. So unfortunately, you're limited to only connecting one single display to this laptop. Not good. And moving over to the right side is your high impedance 3.5 millimeter microphone headphone combo jack. Notably missing, there's no USB-A port and there's no SD card reader of any sort. 
it's a little bit of a miss once again. And I have to say, this is a pretty disappointing port selection considering the two USB-C Thunderbolt 3 ports are on the same side of each other and they're not Thunderbolt 4. But according to Apple's website, these are also USB 4 ports, which theoretically could be the equivalent of a Thunderbolt 4. But I'm not sure if they're really fully supported, to be honest. Not great overall, Apple. Now, one thing to note, the 35 watt power adapter has an extra USB-C port to charge other peripherals. Now, as far as user upgradability, well, pretty non-existent in the sense you cannot change out the SSD or the RAM, which of course is soldered into the motherboard. And speaking of the SSD, these are pretty disappointing reads and writes considering we're here in 2022. Not great. And from what I understand, the entry level 256 gigabyte model is no better. In fact, it's supposedly even worse in terms of the reads and writes. Not good. But in reality, most people won't notice the difference, but techies like us, we tend to notice these things. Not good, Apple. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't support Wi-Fi 6E, but it does support Wi-Fi 6, and unfortunately, it's only employing Bluetooth 5.0, not the more modern 5.2. Although both are working perfectly fine, the good speeds, good connections, and I've had no issues whatsoever. Just wish it was a little bit more up-to-date with modern standards. And while we're inside, you'll notice that there are no fans for cooling. That means this is passively cooled, and we're going to have to deal with thermal throttling when it starts to ramp up. Now, when it comes to performance, when I ran the Geekbench 5, single-core score did really well, coming just shy of its sibling, the MacBook Pro 13 M2. And it did really well in the multi-core score, scoring 8,942. But when you want to do heavy sustained workloads for, I would say, more than 10 minutes, you will notice thermal throttling. That's due to the fact that this has no fans. There's no active cooling. And that's why we're seeing decent single-core scores even under the Cinebench R23. But this finished dead last when it comes to the multi-core performance of a heavy sustained workload. That means if you're going to do anything like video editing or really graphics-intensive stuff, this is going to bog down. And you'll notice a couple of hot spots on the top of the keyboard, as you see here, and on the underside, but for the most part, stayed relatively cool. And it never gets too hot to the touch. You should have no issue using this on your lap. Okay, let's talk about the display. It's now a bigger display, 13.6 inches with a resolution of 2560 by 1664. That's a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. And for those keeping score, that's 225 pixels per inch. Now, Apple is calling this a liquid retina display. And it's an, actually a very nice display. But one thing you'll notice on the top there is the notch. That houses the webcam, of course. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But as far as the display itself is concerned, you're looking at some really deep blacks, good contrast, good white point, really good Delta E score, 1.30. Anything below two is considered color accurate, so it doesn't disappoint. And it also has great coverage of the color gamut, 100% sRGB, 88% Adobe RGB, 95% of the DCI P3 wide color gamut, and 85% NTSC, making this a solid choice for Lightroom, Photoshop, video editing, and of course, color grading. And for those that are sensitive to screen flickering or PWM, the good news is I did not detect any in my testing. That's good. And it's also a very bright display. Now, Apple claims that this will get as bright as 500 nits. I actually measured a little bit less, 485 nits, which is bright nonetheless. So it's going to be good for both indoor and outdoor use. Watching Netflix, Amazon, YouTube has been great on this display. I've had no issues whatsoever. And it's an HDR display. Watching high dynamic range content, as you see here right now, has been excellent on this panel. Now, unlike the MacBook Pro line, this doesn't support a higher dynamic refresh rate or even a higher refresh rate for that matter, with only 60 hertz available to the user here. So if you want a higher refresh rate, you'll have to bump up to the Pro line. And for those looking for a touch display, well, unfortunately, you're out of luck here. But my overall takeaway, this is an improvement over the previous MacBook Air display, and it's a solid choice for those that choose this laptop. It's actually pretty good. So this is the new FaceTime camera on the brand new MacBook Air M2 here for 2022. This is a 1080p webcam. What do you think about the video quality? What do you think about the audio quality of the internal mics? Is this good for your Zoom calls? Is this good for your work from home needs? Let me know in the comments section below. I would say that's a pretty big improvement over the prior MacBook Air. This is actually a pretty good camera to do your video conferencing. Nice job there. But one thing I'm not crazy about, however, is that notch. Unfortunately, it's there. And unlike some people, I can't unsee it. 
Now, unfortunately, there's no IR camera here. There's no face ID or face recognition to log you in. You'll have to use a fingerprint scanner for that. And this employs the Touch ID. The setup was easy and worked really well. A lot of security features tied to the M2 chip, of course, so it worked out pretty well. But again, I still like face recognition as an option here. Don't get it. Now let's talk battery life. This is a 52.6 watt hour battery and it did a whopping 15 hours and 12 minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. That means you're gonna get anywhere from 10 to 12 hours of real world mixed usage, which is excellent. This is a very efficient chipset and Apple certainly has really optimized this M series of chips in terms of the battery life. They do a great job. Now, once again, Apple does a good job in terms of the speakers, although not as good as the MacBook Pro quality, but these are good nonetheless. Still some of the best out there in terms of the audio quality. Now, let's give a listen to Epidemic Sound, and if you want to save 10% off Epidemic Sound, see the link in the description below. Now, let's give this a listen. Okay, let's bring it all home. What do I think about the Apple MacBook Air M2 here in 2022? And I think there's a lot of nice improvements here. Let's start off with what I like. I like the bigger and brighter display. I like the solid keyboard and touchpad, the really long battery life, the new design, and of course the good performance so long as you don't go beyond 10 minutes of a heavy sustained workload. I like the MagSafe adapter. I like the very good speakers, quad speakers, and I like the fact that it runs silent and relatively cool. I like the improvement webcam we now get a 1080p webcam here and that's been pretty good but of course there are some concerning things here like the fact that it only has thunderbolt 3 not thunderbolt 4 ports here in 2022 thermal throttles under heavy load as i mentioned it supports only one external display it has a higher base price with some very costly upgrades and it has slower ssd speeds especially with the entry level model so there are things that are very concerning here for you to be aware of but for the average user that doesn't really care about a lot of the negatives I just talked about, this is going to be perfectly fine for the masses. I'm going to give this a score of 86%, making the MacBook Air M2 a nice choice if you're in the Apple ecosystem. So what do you think about the Apple MacBook Air M2? Very nice design, very thin and light, really nice design language here, more in line with the new MacBooks we've been seeing the last year or so from Apple, uh, went away from the wedge design. Now this is the space gray, and the reason I chose this was because it would show less fingerprints, and I'm glad I did. From what I understand and from the uh, one that I did see in the midnight color is a major fingerprint magnet. This will actually stay a lot cleaner, a lot sharper looking in my opinion, although the midnight will look beautiful when it is clean, but keeping it clean is going to be a chore. Now the silver will certainly show less fingerprints, and I'm sure the twilight will be good in that regard as well. It's the midnight color that I would be very, very careful of going with, especially if you don't like fingerprints all over your laptop. Now, M2 performs very well here, of course. It's a very efficient chip. It's a powerful chipset. And if you're not doing anything for heavy sustained loads for more than 10 minutes, this is gonna be great for you, especially if you're a student or somebody who doesn't really have to do intensive stuff with this. This is gonna be great for Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, you won't have any issues. Where you will have an issue is if you do any processor intensive tasks for, tasks for more than 10 minutes, it's gonna throttle down because there is no fans in this, so there are no fans and there is thermal throttling because it has to cool it down. Now the surface temperatures remained relatively cool and of course it's silent since there is no fan so that's good if you want a silent experience but again if you're doing heavy video editing and gaming and stuff like that you may want to steer clear of this that's for sure. Now, one of the reasons you're going to want to look at this is its phenomenal battery life. Now, I did over 15 hours on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits. What does that mean in real-world mixed usage? Well, you're looking at anywhere from 10 to 12 hours, depending on what you're doing. That's really good, especially when you compare it to some of its competition, especially the Intel with the 12-gen 12 12 12 
processors, which are not doing so great in terms of being really efficient. This is a much more efficient chipset. It also stays cooler. So that's the benefit of going with Apple. And of course, AMD is certainly uh, in the running there as it's not as hot or as less efficient as the Intel version, but still not quite as good as this Apple chipset. Now, having said that, having the great battery life is fine, but again, if you're doing those heavy sustained workloads, you're gonna get that reduced performance. Just, just keep that in mind. Nice improved display, 13.6 inches. It's a little bit bigger, 16 to 10 aspect ratio, has HDR support, of course. Watching movies on Netflix, Amazon, YouTube have been great, so no complaints on the display. The one thing I do not like is the notch. Now, the notch is noticeable. I cannot unsee it, as I said. Some people can, I just can't. Uh, I'm not a big fan of it, but because it has the notch, they went with an approved 1080p webcam here. It was actually pretty good. The sound was good out of the internal mic. So I thought a very nice video conferencing device is what we have here. And it'll be great for your Zoom calls and your work from home needs. Now, the other issue I have with this is its starting price. It now has a higher starting price at $1,199 and it goes up from there. If you bump up to the 512 gigabyte model as I did, uh, that only has eight gigabytes of RAM, and that comes in at a very expensive $1,500. You're already in MacBook Pro territory, which begs the question, why would anybody choose this over the MacBook Pro 14, for instance, or even the MacBook Pro 13, if you don't mind that data design? So there are a lot of questions raised here. Of course, the most people, the masses, won't even know the difference. They're gonna be perfectly fine with this. Performance will be excellent for what they use it for. But if you're a power user like me, you may want to steer clear of this, and that's my uh, bottom line with this. But for the most part, most people are going to be perfectly fine with the MacBook Air M2. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.